So far, in terms of solving a quadratic equation, we've talked about two methods. We've talked about how we can use the zero factor theorem. Of course, that means we have to be able to factor. And we've talked about the square root property. Well, let's take a look at this guy right here. Number one, this guy cannot be solved using the square root property right now because even though you do have x squared, you have a second term that contains x. So if you can't get that square by itself, and that's the only place you have your x, you can't use the square root property. So the next thing you may think about doing is factoring. Unfortunately, this polynomial does not factor. This is a trinomial with a lead coefficient of 1, and we can't find factors of x that subtract to 6. So we're kind of at a loss there. So this is where we talk about something called completing the square. Now, I used to really hate this guy. Maybe it's because I didn't really understand what I was doing and I was making it too complicated, but it's actually pretty simple as long as you have certain conditions met in your equation. And it's all based on a particular formula that you may or may not remember. So a long time ago, you would have talked about special formulas uh, when you're squaring a binomial like this. And when you square this, you get x squared plus 2 times b times x plus b squared. And so this is the form that's going to be in the back of our, back of our minds to help us solve an equation like this. And we're going to formalize these steps in the next video, but right now I just want you to see how we can play around with this equation and come up with something that works out very nicely in our favor. So in order to complete the square, the first thing we want to do is to move the 11 to the other side because right now he is just in the way. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a scenario over here on the left side so that we have a polynomial that factors, but we don't want it to just factor in any old way. We want it to factor like this guy right here, which means we want this to be x squared. We want this guy to be 2bx and this last guy, this blank, this gap that I have here is going to be b squared. So you'll notice that I have b and b. And that's the guy that we're looking for. We're trying to find that b. Now I find that the easiest way to do this is to know where you are heading. Like I know that I'm heading to something that's going to factor, not just as you know two sets of parentheses, but as one set of parentheses squared, so it's going to be the exact same two factors. Now you can kind of guess and check your way through this to figure out what number should go here so that I get the exact same two factors. But we don't have to guess. See, this guy right here, this 6 is your 2b. So if 6 is 2b, that means that b, this guy right here, is going to be half of that guy. So I see 6. If I do half of that, that gives me plus three, right? So I identified my b, that's this guy, because two times b, two times three is six, which means in the gap, it's supposed to be b squared. So again, if b is three, this guy's going to be b squared, which is nine. Now, I want you to notice what's happened here. I added nine on the left side of the equation. And by adding nine on the left side, that allows me to have a polynomial that factors. And how would you factor this? Well, you'd factor that as x plus 3 times x plus 3. The exact same two factors which go together to give you the square. So that's the specific number that we were looking for. That's the number that fills in the gap. It creates a square over here. Now we've done something wrong. We added 9. But by adding 9 on the left side of the equation, we have now created an imbalance. So to balance things back, we have to then add 9 on the right side, like that. So now let's look at our equation. The left side factors as a square, the right side is 20. And now if you look at the equation as it stands right now, it's very similar to the equations that we saw before when we were using the square root property. And that's exactly what we want to do. Our original equation, you couldn't use the square root property, so by some fine-tuning and manipulating, we now have an equation that's ripe for using the square root property. So let's do that. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, again, using that light blue pen that I have reserved just for this 
special occasion. Uh, now remember, when you take the square root of both sides, you must remember the plus or minus. Just like that. All right, so let's see what happens here. On the left side, we have x plus 3. On the right side, we have plus or minus. And this is where you take your square root and you break this guy down. So 20 breaks down as 4 times 5. That's really the best way to break it down for simplifying. Again, each of these factors is inside of a square root. And to help you out, to help you simplify this correctly, you know that the square root of 4 equals 2. Right, not in a square root, but it just equals 2. But the square root of 5 stays as it is. All right, so we get plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. And we finish solving this equation for x by subtracting 3 to the other side. So x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 2 square roots of 5. Again, this is not the prettiest of answers. This is definitely not something that we would have gotten from factoring. It is something that we could have gotten from the square root property if it were set up that way originally, but it wasn't. So we did this process called completing the square. All right. So in the next video, we're going to talk about what is that process and how can I apply it to any and all quadratic equations.